three and a half million. That's the number of steps that will have been completed by standard chartered belt and road relay runners when they finish the belt and road relay. Now that's a corporate and social responsibility program. It recognizes health and it recognizes community. This year, Standard Chartered will be the headline sponsor for the Warsaw Business Run here in Poland. That's a corporate and social responsibility activity that recognizes health and it recognizes community because that represents something of what we are as a brand. We're a community-based organization. We're also a very old organization, over 160 years old. 1858 was when we were one of the first global banks to enter China. We're still in China. 2018 was when we entered the Poland market. And I would hope in 150 years, somebody other than me will be able to say, yes, we're still in Poland because that is also who we are. We are here for good, here for our clients, here for our staff, and here for our communities. But we're also a very future-focused organization. We recognize that our customers want to do business in a different way. And so this year, 2019, we were the first global bank to take a virtual banking license in Hong Kong. Now, to put that in perspective, Hong Kong is our biggest market. So that is effectively a challenger to ourselves. We did that because we recognize that people want to bank in different ways. They want to communicate in different ways. Because we live in an age of communication. We're bombarded with information all the time where to eat, where to shop, what to wear, where to work. Communication allows us to connect. Personally, I've lived and worked in five different countries, including Poland. So my corporate and personal associates are spread around the world like a diaspora. Social media is a great way of keeping in contact with people. One thing that is absolutely critical with communication is to be the driver of your message. Because if you're not the driver, that message will be driven for you. Let me share a little story. So a friend of mine who was based in Asia, he decided to move back to Europe, to the UK. Now, this was something that he had not shared very broadly. His wife, quite sensibly, started disposing of household goods. Some of the old bikes from the kids when they were little, put that on social media auctions. The rowing machine that her husband had promised to use and never used, get rid of that. And the family car, which prompted some questions. Why, what are you doing? And she said, well, we're moving back to the UK. This was on a Friday. By Monday, it was all over his office that he was going and the team had to hustle around and quickly remediate a communication as to what was happening and where he was going and who was coming in. You need to be the driver of your message. Otherwise, somebody else will drive that for you and that could be your competition. Vision will win the war for talent. So who here is looking to hire? I, I know I'm constantly looking for new talent. Yeah, I see a few hands. Okay, there are more of you out there. You're just being shy. Um, and I know that there are quite a few people who come to this conference actually with a view to meeting potential um, new companies that they may want to work for. 
Vision will win the war for talent. I don't mean people are going to work for free. But within industry sectors, however much we differentiate ourselves on tangible benefits, and I believe, for anybody who's interested, that Standard Chartered Poland's benefit structure is very good, but we are existing within an industry banding. We all are. Outside of that, it is your ability to clearly articulate the vision of your organization and to embody that through the CEO and the leadership structure that will differentiate you from your competitors. Let's look at some of the world's biggest brands. Amazon, Facebook, Apple. What unites them? They're all very successful. Technological innovators, and they all have a very strong corporate vision, which is clearly embodied by their CEOs. So as I was researching and, and sort of thinking about how I, would, how I would share this with you today, I went back through um, some YouTube videos of the CEOs, Tim Cook, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, to see what it was about each of these CEOs that so closely aligned them to their brand. They all have very different styles. One is quite jokey. Um, one's very intense and serious, very sincere. And the other one is a little bit, a little bit arrogant, maybe a little aggressive. One thing that unites them all is that they clearly embody the vision and the message of their brand. Facebook. We are about connecting people. Amazon. We want to make it easier for people to shop. Apple. We make the best computers. We're leading the digital music revolution. Each of these organizations has at the heart of their brand ambassador culture their CEOs. So how do you become a brand ambassador? So the good news is, you don't have to be a CEO. In fact, this culture only works if your entire leadership adopts it, and they cascade it to their leaders. This is more than advocacy. This is more than brand endorsement. Let me share something with you. 2008, I was sitting in a coffee shop in the Crown Plaza Hotel in Ortigas, Manila, which is in the Philippines. And opposite me was a very smartly dressed lady who'd come to meet me for an interview. And because it was monsoon, and because Manila has very poor transport system, her feet were soaking wet. And I was trying to persuade her to leave her nice, safe job as a sales executive, working for a global corporate real estate company that actually has an office here, and join me in a regional financial services marketing group to help set up a new office. And I could see what was going through her mind. These people don't even have an office. And she was right. At that stage, I did not have an office. I was still looking, which was how I'd met her. But we did have a vision. And so I asked her, she had come to meet me. I asked her, what is it that you want from your career? She said two things. Number one, I want to look after my family. She was a single mum, and her retired parents lived with her. OK, tangible benefits, right? We've got a banding for that. Fine. What else? Number two, she was bored of her career. 
She wanted an opportunity to have influence. She wanted something she could buy into, something that was growing. And so I shared with her the story of you know, what we were trying to achieve, how the new Miller office would support our regional operations in Singapore and Hong Kong, and what we wanted it to become. And she accepted. And she became my best brand ambassador in the Philippines. And she helped me recruit the rest of the team. And over 10 years later, she's still with that organization. If you have a clearly articulated message and you can be relevant in that message to your audience, if you can repeat and reinforce that message, and if you can create your brand ambassadors, as I did in the Philippines, they will help you cascade that message outwards. And you'll be well on the way to achieving what I call the amplification effect. We talked a little bit about audience, but and my audience is quite a bit bigger now, I think. I can see this piece, but not this piece. Um, your audience is always going to be much bigger than your target audience. And within that bigger piece of audience, some of it is passive and active, but we'll leave that for now. Your target audience is who you want to really focus on being relevant to in your messaging. So who are they? Where are they? What do they care about? What's important to them? What influences their decisions? In over 160 years of Standard Chartered, we had never had an entity in Poland until last year. So this question was absolutely crucial to us as we started hiring here. So much so that we commissioned quite a wide-ranging um, survey to establish exactly those questions. What was important to our audience? A few things came back from that. I'll share two of them with you. Number one, in the top three most important factors for our target demographic in choosing an employer or choosing to stay with an employer, flexibility and freedom. For sure, salaries, bonus, promotions, training, company car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They, they were all in that top ten somewhere. But what we were seeing there is a generational shift. The importance of flexibility and freedom ahead of some of these traditional factors, which told us a lot about our target audience. So much so that as we started hiring here, we made sure to reinforce the message around our flexible working um, and the opportunities there, and to actually encourage people from day one to take that opportunity. We're also amending our dress code policy to acknowledge this sort of different relationship that a lot of our staff have between how they want their work and life to interact. Flexibility and freedom. Now, unsurprisingly, their preferred source of information, actually like a lot of us, is through online content, through social media. What was surprising, to me at least, was that one of the ways they like to learn about new companies was events like this. Because in a digital age, people still need a human touch. And one of the things that they like to do was actually interact and meet with the people that they may potentially want to work with. Be relevant to your audience means knowing who they are, where they are, what they care about. If you can do this and articulate a clear message, create your brand ambassadors and cascade that message, this process will work. And if you don't believe me, I am living proof as I stand here on the stage. This topic was originally um, an article I wrote for a thought leadership series that we published internally within the bank. A colleague of mine read it and said, oh, you should put this out there externally, Rowena. Okay. So I brought it back, looked at it with um, some of my leadership team. We changed the format. We looked at what was more relevant, what, what type of format people were reading online. We published, 
I encouraged my leaders to share it. To date, it's my most successfully online published article um, by, by Hits Views, Reads, Likes, Shares. One of the organizers of this co conference saw that article and asked if I'd like to discuss it with you today. The amplification effect works. It's a process, and we like process. There are some other ways that you know it's working. Reflection. If you see your message being reflected back to you, so look for internally emails, people picking up on elements of your messaging. You know they're hearing it. Externally, your distributors, your business partners, recruitment agents, reinforcing your brand messaging in how they cascade that message out. Because your brand ambassadors don't have to be your managers. They can also be your business partners. In fact, the broader you can get that group, the more effective it will be. Engagement. Don't be surprised to see engagement increasing in your organization. People coming up to you at the stand, if you've got a stand here, at the coffee machine in the office, when you're washing your hands, when you're leaving the bathroom. People coming up and repeating things that you've shared with them around the company messaging, around that brand. Feedback. Now, you want to encourage feedback even if people don't like what they hear or what, they, what you say. In fact, feedback that people don't like allows you to refine your message as you continue to cascade it. So encourage that feedback, listen. And diversification. Now, your brand ambassadors are human. They will naturally tell that vision in their own way. You can reinforce and should reinforce that message, but diversification is a good thing. Remember, you're a brand ambassador, not a brand dictator. Diversification. And there's a few more positive side effects of brand ambassadorship that you might not think about. Passion, passion in the organization. If people are passionate about what they're doing, if they believe in the vision and the purpose and the journey, mediocrity fades away. It's very hard for people to accept a so-so if they genuinely believe. Similarly, cynics, cynics feed off dispassion. You'll quieten the cynics. I'm getting flashed at. Change. Now, I know I'm going through change. Is anybody not going through a change program? 100% of you are going through change. If you can articulate the vision of the organization, it will support your change program as part of the evolution of your company as opposed to just another disruption in people's already busy lives. And then lastly, discover your hidden stars. People you didn't expect to actually be those brand ambassadors. So on, on Saturday last, the 8th of June, uh, Standard Chartered participated in the Warsaw Equality Parade for the first time. It's our, it's our first year here. Um, aside from being an extremely happy event, um, very well attended, very well natured, no trouble at all, something happened to me which was really quite uplifting. Um, a younger, much more recent member of staff came up to me and she said, I've, I've been with the organization for three weeks now. And um, she said, I did my diversity training on my onboarding. And she said, I'm so happy to be here. I said, okay, great. And she said, 
Yeah, my previous organization didn't really encourage these things, but they talk about diversity. I'm really pleased to see that you actually talk about this and actually do what you say. Never underestimate the power of brand ambassadorship. Even those people that you don't expect, if you can get that passion in your organization, it will cascade. So in summary, have a clearly articulated message, reinforce, repeat that message, listen for feedback, create your brand ambassadors, use all the communication channels available to you, do not be afraid of social media, have a relevant message for your target audience and cascade that message out. So the last words I'll leave to um, the, the late General Colin Powell, who was a US Secretary of State under George W. Bush and a Joint Chief of Staff's head for the US military. He said, it is my experience that soldiers watch what their leaders do. You can lecture them forever, you can send them to classes, but it is your personal example that they will follow. Thank you very much.